Zell Boy Army, welcome to another video on the channel. We have another top 200 free in a row. Let me show you where I am in the world for the month. We got a loss on the record this weekend where I got a red card. It was a crazy red card, as in just shouldn't have been one. And I used the, uh, I just quit in squad battle. So my record this FIFA should be 247, 15, 15. Decent start to the game for me, boys. See where we are in the world. We lost our first game this weekend, man, in champs. Um, where did we finish this weekend? It was like 100 odd. Stupid amount of people are getting 30, you know, man. It's absolutely crazy. Disgusting how many people are getting it. I don't, I don't get how there's this many people in 30s. Where am I? Hundred and twenty seven. What rewards does that get us? Let me have a look. Hundred and twenty seven. So we get four player picks, we still get three jumbos, that's not bad. And of course the big one, the ultimate team of the week. Where am I for the month? I'm eighty nine and one for the month. Twenty third, not bad, not bad, you know. Bit disappointing if I'd have. How much skill rate would I have had? About six nine hundred. I would have been like maybe fifth, about fifth in the world for the month. Not that it matters because we don't get monthly rewards anyway. But still, pretty impressive. This video, I'm going to show you the tactics. That I used this weekend. I've been using the 442 second variation. I'm going to tell you why I use that tactic. I'm going to show you the tactics, explain it, talk you through the team, then I'm going to show you some clips in game of how I use the team. I don't want any of this nonsense where you idiots in the comments tell me, oh, if I had your team, I'd hit 30. Oh, it's easy with that team. Don't get me wrong. It is a lot easier when I have R9 and Eto up front. I am not an idiot. I'm well aware of that. But I've played people this weekend who had a better team than me. And I made them quit 3-0 down in 30 minutes. Like The team makes a big difference. But if you gave this team to a gold one player who's got a 2-0 team, they might get a late free. Not everyone's just in top 200 with this. There's thousands of people with teams as good as this or better. Maybe more. And most of these guys are not even hitting elite. Don't be one of those guys who's just salty because your team's not as good. I'm here to help you guys. Help improve as much. So it kind of gets a bit frustrating when you just see people in the comments being silly. Appreciate all the support lately on the channel as well. You guys have been incredible. But this is the team. So the defence, pretty standard. Just swapping Joe Gomez, basically, that most people have for Desai. Desai has been my favourite centre back this year. I would like to try the inform Gomez. He does look a bit of an animal. Walker, for me, is the best non icon right back. Uh, Zidane and Paulinho, my red pick. Um, at CDM. In the 442 or the 4231, I like a duo in midfield, the two midfielders, the CDMs or centre mids in the normal 442, to be a creator and a destroyer. So for me, Zidane is the ultimate creator, but you could get a cheap one like De Bruyne in, and then a destroyer, so a Kante, Musoko, a big one would be like a Vieira. Paulinho is really good at this. He's pretty great going forward as well. He can dribble. He's got very good shooting. Um, very good defending physical. His only issue is just a bit slow. And you do notice it, but he's still very good. My left mid's Mbappe. Right mid Salah. I don't really like Salah. I would like to probably get the inform Rashford. But Salah's untradeable. And R9 rinsed me of all my coins. Um, lots of pace out wide. Decent physicality is pretty nice as well. Um, but yeah, I quite liked um, Salah at times, but he just didn't do enough to justify what he would cost, but like I say, he's untradeable. Um, and then up front, the big boys, the 10 million coin strike partnership, R9, who was good, very good, but not really 8 million coins good. How much is he worth now? A bit cheaper. And big Sammy Eto, what a man he was. He genuinely was unreal. He was probably better than R9. Look at his goal record. I'm going to do a video this week on the most OP technique of scoring in FIFA 21. And Sammy is the king in that one. Look at his stats with a Hawkman. He's unreal. I 
can't wait to see what his prime moments are going to be like. But that was the team. Let's get into the tactics. So I start with constant pressure in my balanced. Obviously the balanced is this formation here just to get chemistry. Um, I'm not going to go in depth on my ultra defensive, my defensive and ultra attacking because I've done those in other videos. This video is specifically about my 4-4-2 second variation. Okay, so this is the tactics for the 4-4-2 second variation. One of the things I've been trying to do lately is adapt my game to become a better player. I tend to be quite a good player switcher, using the right stick a lot, cutting passing lanes out. But I recently joined Gamers Class. If anyone hasn't seen that, I've signed um, a contract to be a pro player and content creator for Gamers Class. Amazing organisation that I dedicate to helping you guys improve at FIFA. Look at the link in the description below. You can join on a free trial. You get more access to exclusive videos on there. A Discord full of passionate people in a community looking to get better at the game. And also Gamers Class in the next few weeks are releasing episodes every day from a text masterclass so you can see exclusive videos of the number one thief playing the world Tex and what he says to get better again and one of the things donovan donovan hunt mr Tex, said that he does is he has six depth and five width and plays a lot more aggressive and i noticed how high up the pitch is winning the ball and i'm trying to adapt to be better and i found i'm this is what i was running before four four in balanced in the four two three one I've gone to pressure on heavy touch, six depth, five width, and I'm playing a lot more aggressive, winning the ball a lot higher up. I'll show you some clips of that after we've shown the tactic. And it's been making a big difference. It's made me a better player. <clears throat> I know I didn't get a 30 this week when I've used this, but the game that I lost, it was pretty disgusting. And I streamed every game this week. Um, and after getting two thirds, I don't think I've been swaying it quite as much because it just didn't mean quite the same. But we still managed to get the top 200. The offense is very similar. Five whip, five players in box. Uh, offensive balanced. I just find the pressure on every touch just puts the opponent under more pressure. It allows me to obliterate people a lot more. It's a bit riskier. But if you can adapt to it, especially with how press it is on this game, it's going to make you a more aggressive player. You're probably going to have more fun with it. And you're going to get a lot more of the ball. And put your opponents under a lot more pressure. The 4-4-2 second variation you can see the only difference with that and the 442 is that in this one you have CDMs. In that one you have centre mid. I like having CDMs because naturally when I'm defending, the CDMs drop a bit deeper, protect the edge of our box and act as a better shield. Whereas the centre mids sometimes don't do a lot of defending. But they still attack the CDMs. So I think it's just a better version to be honest. Instructions, stay central, get in behind, stay forward on the strikers. I want lots of runs in behind, use the pace, uh, through balls are OP, two players making runs like this, it's very hard to defend for your opponent. Come back on defence on the wingers, I want them to help out, protect the wings. Balance width, get in behind. I used to use stay wide, but I found balance whips allowed me to just get a few more um, cutbacks, a few easier goals with them. Zidane is on balanced, balanced cover centre. In the 4 2 3 one, I've been doing cover wing to protect the lamb and ram a bit more. But in this, because I've got a left mid and right mid just set a bit deeper on comeback on defence, we put in cover centre. And then for the destroyer, so Paulinho here, cut passing lanes, stay back while attacking and cover centre, and then stay back while attacking on all the defenders. I'm finding it's just so much more fun to play with this formation. Um, the defending's still good, you can still keep the ball, you've got lots of whip. I much prefer playing with two strikers. And the 4 4 2 is also really good for pressing. Let's get into some gameplay clips so you can see exactly how I'm using the team in game, how the formation plays, and how it's working for me. Okay, the first highlight I'm going to show you here in the 4-4-2 is how quickly you can counter-attack in this formation. So you can see here, I win the ball back. It was on 850. Get it to Salah. And then my strikers are both on stay forward, so we go straight to them. And because I have higher depth, my wingers still, even though they're going to come back on defense, still sit a bit higher. So, 850. You can see there, basically in one in-game minute, I've scored from my, the edge of my own box. And what the two strikers do in this formation, they stay around this area here. They try to find space. 
and then especially when you've got pacey ones with good movement like Eto, they make these runs in behind and it's so hard for the defense to deal with one thing that works really well with it is that because you've got two strikers both strikers occupy one of the center backs if this was the 4-2-3-1 the striker this striker Eto would be marked by both of these guys whereas the R9, let's say he was the cam, would be marked by this guy and sat a bit deeper. But because I've got two strikers, it means only one of them's marking it out. He gets a lot more space. And then I get an easy goal from one through ball. The 4 2 3 one's just not as good at counter attacks down the middle like that. And you get so many cheap, easy goals from your strikers getting through like that. You used to have to counter quick when it's available and play it into your strikers. It's also good against the team press when you've got the two strikers to do this. I'm going to show you an example of the high defensive line and the way this formation presses. Well, the tactic presses. One of the things that I find a bit annoying about the press with heavy touch or press on heavy touch is that it seems a bit random. Like It doesn't seem to just do it when there's a bad touch. But anyway, here you can see the team pushes up. Maybe it was after a bad header there. And then now when he's flicked it up to this guy, he doesn't really have an option. And then Walker wins the ball back straight away. There was literally nothing the opponent could have done about that. I've got a high defensive line. Push up, win the ball. Obviously, the risk of a high defensive line is if you make a mistake, switch bad, they make a good run, you can end up laying someone in easy. But you win the ball a lot higher up the pitch and get chances like that. Then you see Salah did that teleport glitch. Let's have a look what happens for the rest of it. I, can't actually, I don't actually know what happens here. You see there... My team push up. The space in behind, which means if they play it right and you don't defend it well, they can get in a bit more. But because my defense is so pushed up, their um, team get pinched more. And then you turn it into quick counter attacks. Do I score from this? I think he's off. But yeah, you saw there. If I'd have ball rolled it rather than lobbed, I'd have scored. And twice in quick succession, I won the ball back very quick from a high defensive line. A high press that gets in your opponent's face. And this is about team press and losing a lot of stamina. This clip here, I don't end up scoring from. But it just shows you how hard it is for your opponent to defend. And how the 4-4-2 second variation, or just 4-4-2 in general, works and pens people in. So you can see here, I'm playing with my two CDMs. They still push up. You still get chances to attack with them. They're not too defensive. That was a bad choice by me, that. But you can see here, I've got basically my four attackers, left mid, right mid, two strikers, occupy the back four. So they're all marked by one man. All that means is you need one man to get free or to pass to one man and turn one man and you're in on goal. Look here. Here, if I'd have been smarter about it, I would have turned and threw balls to Danny who was running there. So the CDM, you can see, they still get four and give you options. I go for a finesse and maybe I hit it a bit hard. But I still very nearly score from that. But you see, I get that space to hit the finesse because I have four attackers occupying all the defenders. Okay, here I lose the ball and watch how quickly I step in and win it back. So I have my two midfielders here. The defensive line is very high. He does a silly trick and I just step in and win the ball. It's another example of the high line and how you can be aggressive and initiate counter-attacks quickly from it. What do I do here with it? Okay, again there, I've nearly scored very quickly. If I'd have put half bar more power on that, that would have been a goal. But stepping up like that with Varane, your centre-backs being aggressive, again, be careful. If you do this wrong, they can get in behind easily. But I'm making myself a better player by improving how quickly I switch, being more aggressive, high defensive line, putting more pressure on my opponent, and it's making me far more attacking. I'm enjoying the game more, finding it more fun, and being able to blow people away a lot more. I just find it a more fun way to play the game. This clip here is a great example of the 4-4-2 again. You can see here using the CDMs. Sometimes it's better to be smart, go backwards. The 4-4-2 has six attackers effectively. With the four in midfield, the two wingers, the two strikers, two CDMs. You can go backwards, use the two CDMs to do that. And then there, out of nowhere. So I'm going backwards, I'm playing quite slow keeping the ball, making my opponent dive in. Quick touch, Cruyff turn, then bang, top corner finesse. 
it's very hard for your opponents to defend that. Lots of men, lots of options, lots of different patterns you can attack him. When I lose the ball here, watch how quickly my team swarm him. Effectively, what team press is supposed to do, team press, press on heavy touch is supposed to do is, as soon as they get a player near them, or they hit a slightly bad pass, or a loose ball happens, or a 50-50, your team effectively going to team press, but without the constant stamina drain. So you can see there, a man gets very tight, and then my team just all start getting tight to their opponents. He doesn't have much space, and then because he's got nothing on, he just loses the ball. You see my team go straight back into it, because they've got a lot of men on him. There's not really much you can do, and then my guy effectively there, Mendy, uses the team press type thing where he just jumps in. Plus again, higher depth, it pinches them, gives them less space to play in. It is very hard for people to play against. I love the 4-4-2 because of the attacking width you get. The two strikers give you space in the middle. The CDM still gets space. They protect your defensive shield. The high depth and press and heavy touch makes you a far more aggressive attacking player. I just think it's a far more fun formation and way of playing this game. But it's also very effective and suits the game right now in my opinion. I hope you've enjoyed this video boys. Any questions please let me know. Appreciate all the support of the channel lately. Have a great evening.